Hi everyone! In this video I want to show you a gameplay between Grandmaster Livio Di Tarnisipiano from Germany and Grandmaster Nikita Vityukov from Russia. This game was played in 22 European Team Championship Round 8. It was a very instructive game because Nisipiano with his attacking style managed to defeat a 2700 player. Due to his aggressive style he earned the reputation of being a modern Mikhail Tal. In this game he started with e4, his opponent replied with e5, knight to f3, knight to c6, bishop to c5, and we have the Ruy Lopez, or the Spanish opening, black to attack the bishop, bishop to a4, knight to f6, attacking the pawn, castle, this e4 pawn is not free, and if black tries to, to take it, white attacks the knight, and after knight to c5 taking the bishop, bishop takes, pawn takes, check, and knight to e6. In the game, black played another move, bishop to e7, and now the pawn is hanging, so white defended, b5, bishop to b3, d6, preparing development of the last square bishop, c3, preparing d4, and the last square bishop can go to d square if he is attacked by the knight. Black castled, d4, bishop to g4, developing the last minor piece on the most four square, in white camp, pinning the knight, and this is known as the Bogolyubov variation. With this move, black threatens to take a pawn or a ruin white pawn structure. For example, after h3, black takes on f3, and if he is taking with the queen, He's losing a pawn. The only way to maintain this pawn is to ruin his pawn structure. In the game, Nisipiano played bishop to e3, protecting the d4 pawn. We can notice that e4 pawn is free to take, and if uh, black wants to grab this pawn, he will recover this pawn after bishop to d5, queen to d7, bishop takes on e4, d5, bishop to c2 e4, h3, bishop to h5, and the best way for white is to give the piece back after knight bd2, e takes on f3, and knight to f3. In the game, black did not went for this variation, and he took on d4, white recaptured, knight to e5, attacking the bishop, bishop to c2, and knight to c4, attacking the dark square bishop, bishop to c1, c5 attacking white center and white played b3 kicking the knight away and this pawn move allows the development of his dark square bishop black moved the knight to b6 knight bd2 rook to c8 h3 bishop to h5 and white can continue to develop his last minus piece on b2 but he pushed a4 trying to create some weaknesses on the queen side and open some files. Black took on e4. If white recaptured this pawn, black will take on d4. And because of this, Nisipiano pushed d5. He took on f3, white recaptured with the knight, and he grabbed another pawn. Bishop takes on b3. The pawn is attacked, so black defended this pawn. White needs to continue his development and play bishop to d2 and then pin the knight. In the game he played e5. Before playing this move he spent here almost 18 minutes. And before playing such a move we need to look at all aggressive moves that black can take. We need to look at all his pieces and see what aggressive moves he has in reply to our move. And for this we see that he can play c4, attacking our bishop. He takes with the bishop back, two pieces are attacked. Rook to b1, c takes on b3, queen takes on b3. So this uh, c4 move counter-attacking um, our bishop would have been a good option for black. In the game, black after white move, e5, he moved the knight back. This kind of move is good only after we see that all other options are not working. This move allows white to push e6, 
black took and we notice that black is two pawns up and he has three best pawns on the queen side but in return white has free space for his pieces to move and attack black weakened position after this move black moved the knight and this uh, pawn controls key squares in black camp and if white manages to place a knight on this square he has a winning position that's why white continue with knight to g5 d5 black two connected pass pawns start to move and white needs to continue his attack and not allow black to have any counter chances so he placed the knight on f7 attacking the queen queen to c7 another option for black was to give the rook for a knight and a pawn and in the end the material situation would be equal why continue with bishop to c2 placing the bishop on b1 h7 diagonal on b3 he was looking at a pawn that was well protected d4 bishop to g5 white threatens mate in few moves let's play a random move a5 and in this moment white can take on f6 bishop takes bishop takes on h7 check king takes queen to h5 check and after king to g8 we have queen to h8 mate so black needs to defend the knight from f6 and a good move would be to bring the other knight to d5 protecting that knight in this position instead black played g6 this is a very weakening all dark squares around his king are very very weak why continue with the most forcing move queen to f3 finishing the opening connecting the rooks and attacking the knight for a second time black moved the knight to h5 bishop to h6 he did not want it to exchange the bishops with this move the rook is attacked the knight went back and in this position we need to ask ourselves what attacking moves does white have here one move would be bishop to e4 attacking the rook the other one is bishop to f4 attacking the queen and another one is queen to g4 with the idea of sacrificing the bishop on g6 and recapture with the queen let's look at the uh, bishop to e4 first the rook is attacked so rook to a7 queen to g4 bishop to f6 bishop to f4 queen to c8 knight to a6 check king to h8 bishop to d6 attacking the rook rook to e8 knight to f7 check king to g8 rook a to b1 taking the knight knight to a4 and after rook to b8 black queen is lost so this attacking move bishop to e4 is a good one let's see the other one with bishop to f4 attacking the queen in this moment black queen has two squares to go c8 and a7 so at the first glance this move looks good because our opponent is going back which is the correct result we should get when we play an attacking move if uh, black plays queen to a7 rook a to b1 looking at the knight a5 queen to c6 attacking the knight knight to c4 rook to b7 queen to a6 queen takes queen takes and the bishop is lost winning a piece so bishop to f4 attacking the queen was also good in the game white played another move rook to b1 but this move doesn't force black to defend or go back now we see why attacking moves are the best because they force our opponent to react in our case black can do whatever he wants so he continue with c4 this connected pass pawns can become very dangerous if white is not continuing with attacking moves bishop to f4 attack the queen but um, in this line black queen has another square beside c8 and a7 now she can go to c5 and from this square she's defending the knight in the game black move the queen to a7 the knight is defended but black pieces are far away from his king while white pieces are pointing towards black king why continue with knight to a6 check king to h8 knight to f7 
check, White repeated the position in order to reach the time control. At this point, Nisipian was in time trouble. Better was to go for the attacking move, and in this position, Bishop to a4 was a good alternative. King to g8. Maybe you wonder in this position why Black did not take the knight. And after this move, White takes on e7. We see that Black King has no squares to go. If uh, he tries to block the pawn with uh, the rook, we can see that the queen is overloaded, defending the knight and the bishop. And after we take the knight, we take the bishop, queen to d8, attacking our rook, defending d3, bishop to a4, d2, rook to e8, d1, queen, check, king to h2. Queen 1 to d6, Queen takes on d6, and Black King is lost. So giving up the exchange is not a good option for Black. In the game he continued with King to g8, Bishop to e5, attacking d4, d3. White can go back with the Bishop to d1, but he gave another check with the Knight, King to h8, Knight to f7 check, King to g8. And in this position, white sacrificed the bishop for the two pawns in order to relieve the pressure on his position. Before taking the pawn, he repeated the position two more times. And now he took the pawn. We are on move 40. So white managed to reach the time control. Black continued with rook a to c8. And white plays now a very good attacking move bishop to d4, pinning the knight, and this piece is attacked twice. Black tried to, to defend with bishop to c5, but this is the mistake. The problem with this move is that the bishop is not really defending the knight, because after the bishop exchange, white queen will double attack the rook that will be here and the knight. And here, before exchanging the, the bishops, Nisipiano uh, checked again. And now, now another check, king to h8, and now he took on c5. And after rook takes queen to d6, white is recovering the material. Rook c to c8, rook takes on b6. Black continue with rook f to e8, blocking the pawn. And when you have a pass pawn, you should try to push it every time your opponent gives it the opportunity. We need to see if e7 is good or not. For example, if we push e7, rook to uh, c7, attacking this pawn for a third time, and white can white do here. Let's see all candidate moves. We have a check with uh, knight to f7. We can take on a6, attacking the queen, or move the queen to d5, threatening some smother mates. After we give a check with the queen on g8, and after rook recapture, we have knight to f7 mate. Let's see the first option, where white plays knight to f7 check, king to g8, rook takes on a6, attacking the queen, queen to c5, queen takes, rook takes, Knight to e6, check, king to h8, rook to f7, threatening mate on f8, defending, knight to f7, check, king to g8, and knight to d6, forking the rooks, rook takes on e7, rook takes on e7, rook to f8, rook takes, king takes, and we can stop here, because white is a rook up. So, knight to f7 in the original position is winning. Let's see the other option, we the rook takes on e6, attacking the queen. Again, the queen trade, and we have the same variation where we double attack the rooks. So this is winning as well. Let's look at the last option with the queen to d5, threatening the smother mate. Rook takes, rook takes on e7, queen takes, knight to f7, check, king to g8, knight to d6, check from the queen, queen to e6, knight takes on e8, queen, takes on d5, knight to f6, check, winning the queen back, and white is winning again. So all moves in the original position are working. Instead, white decided to repeat again the position and played knight to f7, check, king to g8, 
Knight to f6 check, King to h8, and now he pushed e7. In this position, black continued with Queen to c7, trying to exchange queens. Nisipiano gave another check, King to g8, and now he exchanged queens. And after this move, he played Knight to d6, and in this position, black resigned. Possible continuation would be Rook e takes on e7, Rook to b8 check. Knight to e8, rook takes on e8 check, rook takes, knight takes on e8, and we can stop because white is a knight up in this position. So, this was the game between Grandmaster Livio di Ternisipiano and Grandmaster Nikita Viotukov. If you found this video useful, click on the like button, share this video, watch other games from my channel, and leave some comments and suggestions in the comment section. See you next time. Bye.